I'm very happy to see such a young uh, team, uh, uh, you know, to my left. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's very hurting that the, uh, uh, the food service industry, of course, we have leaders like, <coughs> you know, the, uh, Mr. Bhandari right in front of us, uh, but uh, we increasingly, I think, the, 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 the balance of power in the, you know, food service industry is moving towards young people, you know, the, what we call the new generation. Uh, of course, they may not be Generation Z, but definitely the Generation X and Y. Actually, Generation X has become now quite redundant. Uh, that's my generation. <laughs> we used to be, we used to matter in about 30 years ago. But I think now it's increasingly the millennial generation that we're talking about, or Generation Y, whatever. But, uh, you know, it's the millennials serving the millennials. I think that is the new, uh, you know, um, the new truth about the uh, F&B service industry. So now let's, uh, you know, all of you here are innovators, you know, and it's so nice that, uh, you know, all of you are, uh, you know, here. Unfortunately, um, uh, you know, one is still s somewhere in the airspace, you know, so uh, uh, I hope he can come uh, towards the end. That is um, uh, Vikramjit as opposed to Bikramjit. Uh, and Roy as opposed to Ray. Uh, so uh, Vikram Jit Roy is on his way, you know, is flying in from Mumbai, but given the weather conditions and all, he's sort of stuck somewhere. You know? Anyway, uh, so uh, Balpreet, uh, you know, it's your home territory. And, you know, I wouldn't have recognized you today till if someone had not announced your name, because I've never seen him in a turban, you know. So, uh, now, so tell uh, Balpreet, Annamaya is a fantastic new concept. It's a trail blazer in the uh, FNB service industry. Um, how did, uh, you know, you of course came a little late on, on the scene, it was Chef Alex Moser who did all the groundwork, but what is it that appealed, appeals to you, and you, I think you came from Germany, if I'm not wrong, uh, from Spain, okay. And, you know, what is it about Andamaya that sort of struck you as, oh, you know, all this, you know, this is done in Spain and this is done in international capitals and it's also happening in Delhi. What is it about Andamaya that um, gave you that feeling? You know? So when I came down from Spain, uh when I was in Panich, I, I am from Panichari, so when I uh, looked upon uh, for the restaurant scene in, in, uh, in India uh, and uh, Annamaya as such, what I was looking on, it, it's very similar to uh, any normal mercado in Spain. Like uh, you go down to Madrid, Barcelona, that way to, uh, to Donostia, San Sebastian, you come down to Marbella. It's uh, very, very similar. But uh, what happens in a mercado, like in a market, is you go and uh, you're looking for ingredients to buy, right? And you can also get those ingredients cooked for you right there. At Anamaya, we have done exactly the opposite, like it's done in a food hall, where you go to eat, right? And you can also buy those ingredients, what are being, so, uh, being used in the kitchen. And uh, that actually ends up showing you the confidence what we have in our ingredients. So that's why we put them on uh, the, the retail space what we have created in terms of uh, uh, selling them out. And uh, that is what which actually pulled me towards the brand. And uh, of course, uh, as in the whole concept, like eat mindful, the pillars what we have, eat mindful, sharp artisanal and you know, raise awareness. So that way is, uh, I've uh, been in love with the concept and we are actually living it as a team in the whole of Andaz. I mean, Anamaya is living the dream and uh, we have a lot of opportunity uh, in terms of growing. So and also I, discovering new ingredients, I mean, like, yes, in terms and of ingredients that are in your neighborhood. Very, very true. I mean, uh, I mean, who does the Banyard uh, Mile Biryani or yeah. see what we've been doing. So we started uh, doing it, we started changing the whole concept. A lot of people, of course, told us, you know, that how can you leave the rice yeah. for a biryani, but then why not? I mean, uh, it is a grain and we have, of course, taken out the grain and given the dish another grain. Right. And, uh, I mean, I like in a lot of my... It's I mean, I love the banyard millet biryani. This is what I have. And, of course, we have a different take on uh, certain dishes like mean polichidhi, which is from Kerala. I, I call it the plantain leaf fish, which is done in a very similar fashion, but of course I change the fish because of the seasonal availability. We respect the season in Anamaya, that's why the menus change every, every month. I mean in terms of changing of dishes, we are not very, very stubborn on changing the whole menu. But then we do have changes in the dishes which keep on going and, uh, and I believe everybody is appreciating that, that particular fact that you know, we respect the season. So that's, uh, that's interesting, you know. Um, 
I think the buzzword today is season, uh, uh, seasonal and local. Uh, and I think uh, restaurants like um, Annamaya just drive home that point, you know, um, uh, which, is, um, which is very heartening to know. I mean, it's a very positive development. Uh, you know, Chef Nikhil, you come from the uh, south, from a, a grand hotel called ITC Chola. You know? Uh, uh, grand Chola, yeah, yeah, okay. So, uh, it can't, I mean, I don't think there are, there's a hotel grander than ITC Grand Chola. Uh, maybe Grand Bharat is uh, bigger, you know, and grander. Uh, but, uh, you know, when it started, I felt that, okay, you know, it's a new hotel, but some of the, the food concepts are still the traditional ITC, you know. Till uh, Avartana sort of broke the ground, you know. So, can you explain what, what was the thinking behind Avartana and, you know, um, and for Chennai, it's quite a revolutionary new restaurant, isn't it? Uh, so, Avartana started in 2017, which was last year. Uh, we started working on the concept in 2015. Uh, there was a need of a uh, South Indian restaurant, which was different from what ITC was already doing, which was Lakshin, which was again an iconic uh, restaurant by ITC. Uh, so, there was a void and uh, we wanted to do something which was more universal and which was in the market at that time. So that's when we got this opportunity to uh, develop a restaurant which is uh, uh, rooted to South Indian flavors but not a South Indian cuisine restaurant uh, led by Chef Ajit Bangera who is the executive chef of the hotel. Uh, the philosophy was that uh, we did not want any South Indian chefs cooking food there because what would have happened is it would have been difficult to move them away from what they had been cooking all the years. So my personal background, uh, uh, I've been cooking European food and I've been at the coffee shop and I've, I've stayed in South of India. I've stayed in Chennai for almost 10 years. So I understood the flavors of uh, what South Indian food was. Same was for Chef Bangera who's traveled around a lot. A uh, couple of other chefs. Vast international experience, Chef Bangera. No? Yeah, uh, he's been out of India for almost 20 years. Yes. So he, he, he had the flavors of what people like and uh, he understood the universal palate. Uh, that was more important for us, that we wanted to have the menus uh, which are universally accepted, not just for the south of India. Uh, so that's where the Avartana came up. Yeah, in, in, interesting, you know, because uh, you're talking about, you don't have to be a south Indian chef to excel in using South Indian flavors, you know. For instance, uh, Manish Mehrotra was, uh, you know, um, who was supposed to be with, uh, in our panel but is not here. He trained to be a Thai chef, uh, uh, an oriental chef and uh, I, I remember all of us first knew him as um, this maker of great khao sui, you know, so I, I used to love his khao sui, you know. Uh, but now he's, uh, I think that's a distant past for him, you know. Uh, similarly, um, uh, I was again uh, uh, talking, uh, I mean, if you see Gagan, you know, uh, his team is international. His tandoori is a Spaniard, you know. I mean, I have <laughs> yet to come across a, sp a Spanish uh, tandoori in an Indian restaurant, but he's doing a, a great job, you know. Uh, so, um, uh, what is it like, you, you, you always work with European cuisine. Now, Avartana's, um, just for the sake of the Delhi um, audience, can you give a couple of ex examples of some of the dishes at Avartana and explain how did your European uh, training background helped you uh, develop those dishes? Uh, it's pretty difficult to just explain uh, the dishes and I'm not sure if I'll be able to do justice there. I wish I had some uh, visuals. Uh, but nonetheless, a uh, couple of uh, dishes which we're really proud of is uh, the very classic rasam what we do there. Uh, you know, you, you would have had rasam all around and uh, mostly when you drink rasam, you have the tomatoes in your mouth, you have the pepper and coriander and everything. Just, it's a very robust kind of a soup. Uh, but to make it universal, the idea was to distill it, to make it clean, make it an amber color, something similar to a consomme, but uh, yet have the punch and the flavor of a rasam. So that's… It's like a rasam consomme, you know, sort of… Uh, yes, in, in fact, the service, service style of the rasam, the ritual uh, of serving the rasam is also very interesting. Okay. Uh, the server gets it on a tray and puts it next to the table. Uh, we have a plunger. Uh, the plunger has got some fresh coriander and some tomatoes. So to get that last uh, punch of the uh, fresh coriander in that, so he plunges it and then he pours it and serves it into a martini like, like glass. Like you serve coffee or something. Yes, so it's served in a martini glass, which is clear and uh, uh, you can see the beautiful color of the rasa. Fantastic. Yeah? Uh, of course, um, you know, 
I do a little jump, you know, the, the Megha and Priyam, you know, they're two young powerhouses, you know. I'll spend a lot of time talking to them. Uh, but, you know, uh, Ranveer, <coughs> you've seen, um, you know, um, you've, you've seen the industry uh, as a chef, you, you know, uh, you've, uh, uh, you know, you've done, uh, you've done a lot of research also, you know, you've uh, also uh, done TV shows and you've uh, run restaurants, not only in India, but abroad. Uh, so, you know, you're one of those people who's, who's blessed with being so multi-talented and have done, um, you know, talk, talking, you've not only been an entrepreneur, you've also been a, a cook in the real sense of the term, you know. Uh, so, um, not really, uh, in over the, uh, say, your experience is now about 20 years, professional experience. You're 25, wow, <laughs> okay. Uh, you're, um, you know, so 25 years of experience. How have you seen the food service scene, um, you know, evolve in these 25 years? And uh, you've seen generations of chefs, you know. How, how's the new generation different from yeah, the generation yeah. you started with? The Khan Sahib you started with, you know, the, your original start. Mm -hmm. you know. It feels strange to be answering that question, trust me. How have you seen the industry change? I think, there, you know, uh, there are a lot of people there who would, who would have the right answer as well. But I'll tell you from a personal perspective, um, um, a lot of things have changed, whether it's front of the house or back of the house. Uh, uh, when, when we joined the industry, it was an industry of intimidation. Yeah. And you could sense intimidation everywhere, whether it is the chef in the chef court standing in the office or the consumer coming to the restaurant with these uptight servers right there. It was, it was you know, <laughs> if there's one word you'd, you'd, you'd like to remember, it was like, oh, you only go there for special occasions or, oh, our dal is cooked for like 36 hours. You can't cook it at home. So it was, it was 25 years ago, it was an industry of intimidation where, you know, we are better than you and, and, and um, what has happened is the industry has become assimilative, participative, it's become uh, um, engaging, so as to say, you know, uh, you know, you can, when you feel good, you can just go up to your executive chef and high five. I wouldn't chef Chopra sitting here, you know, chef better up. We could never imagine, I mean, you know, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, we could never imagine going to Chef Chopra's office and standing and asking for leave, forget about high five. So, <laughs> you know, so it's become more, it's, more, it's become more uh, engaging, it's become more involving and it's involved the consumers as well. If we don't tell people anymore that this is the only thing that you can't make at home. Now we say that this is the only thing that you can't make at home. <laughs> so, so that, 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 that is a big, that keyword from intimidation to, hey, I am more like you has changed. The other uh, factor that has changed is it's now run by, uh, by um, you know, chefs who've seen India in a different light, who've seen their country in a different light, uh, who, who, who've, who've grown up as, uh, you know, um, as, as, a, a, as a generation with, with a very clear need of uh, um, self-actualization, you know, where expressing is a very, very core need, whether it's on Instagram, Twitter, Expressing is very core, right? Uh, and they need to talk. And that expression is coming across uh, in, in a lot of ways in, in food and beverage. You know, uh, we live in a world that likes to talk, that likes to talk about what they cook, that likes to talk about what they eat, that likes to, you know, post pictures of what they're doing. And in, in our times, it was, it, was, um, it was a little different. You know, cooking was always an expression. But expression wasn't there in the forefront. And, and that expression of Indianism uh, is the biggest change uh, that, that, that I've seen uh, that has come. I think what, what also happened is in the last 10, 15 years, we've defined being Indian. You know, and the definition of being Indian has, is something that, that, that uh, a 30-year-old chef has grown up with for the last 15 years. Yeah. And that uh, definition is something that they imbibe and then they try to express. And that Indianism is, is something that you see now. You know? uh, at least see more than earlier. I still, I still always say that there is a lot of pretense still in our food and we need to kind of remove it and, you know, um, so Banyard Millet in Jangora, right? It's also called Vrat Ke Chawal. Yeah, so when you can have Vrat Ke Chawal in Vrat, why can't you have Vrat Ke Chawal ki biryani? But the moment I call it Vrat Ke Chawal and not a Banyard Millet, you're saying, Vrat Ke Chawal ke la You know, I think that's the next level that we need to crack and we, we need to, we need to, Take the gloss away and show it for what it's real and have people accept it because that's really being Indian. I think uh, the, the last point was a particularly important point, you know, because I get very confused between foxtail millet and barnyard millet and 
this and that, you know, just tell me Jhangora or, you know, Kangani, you know, I'll know that better. I mean, I, the classic example is today, no one calls a pumpkin pumpkin anymore. They all call it butternut squash, you know. Now, I don't know, why do you have to call butternut squash, you know, kaddu or butternut squash, you know. I mean, I'm quite happy being given kaddu ka soup and not butternut squash. Th turmeric latte. <laughs> Your turmeric latte, you know. So, which we, of course, uh, had forgotten completely about us, about till... Uh, no, no, tell me, um, you know, um, Ranveer, you, you wrote this fantastic book in which you also talked about the, you know, you went into a lot of the science of t taste, you know, which I think should be, uh, you know, sort of um, entrepreneurs uh, in the business or, you know, young restaurateurs and chefs should understand. You know, uh, were you able to, like, spread the message across, you know, the, the whole, you know, you, you did this whole Maslow's, uh, you know, like, uh, you, sort yeah. of uh, ladder, but you know, can you like simplify it and say, how can uh, chefs and restaurateurs become tastemakers? I think, I think it's, uh, and I, I try and do, so in order to spread it, I try and take it to various schools. And I do uh, sessions on what I call a dish hierarchy theory in wherever, whichever college I go to, immediately after the session, I'm going to another college and doing that. All that I, all that I tried to say in that was, yes, um, two people can never cook the same food even if you give them the same ingredients, the same weight, the same ratio, because there is, there is and there will always be an abstract when it comes to cuisine. Yeah, when it comes to taste, there will always be an abstract, the X factor, which you really cannot take away. But there is, uh, the, you can still put, uh, you can still put a map to that X factor, you can still, uh, and that is what I try to do. I try to say, you know, uh, when we said, uh, okay, uh, we today we talk about tastes and the five tastes and you know pre Ayurveda and Chef Chef Ravitej is right there and you know yeah, Chef is. Ravitej Ashish and why did you come? All the, you know? the, and the, 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 it's, it's, the new leaders of the chef community should be up front. You know? <laughs> and today we talk about these five tastes and we say sweet, savor, and you know and that's what we teach. Pre Ayurveda we always spoke spoke about the rasas and we said one finger is every rasa. Cook with your hand because that's how the rasas go in. Eat with your hand because that's how the rasas go into your mouth. And the house of the Rasas was the Raswati, known as the Rasoi. However, you know, somewhere, somehow, we, we, the 300 years of, of, of in between, we lost our, uh, our science. And suddenly, our science became philosophy. And because we lost the reasoning behind our science. All that I've tried to do in that dish hierarchy is say, hey, cooking of food is a science. There's a little bit of philosophy in it. But then there's also science behind that philosophy, which, is, which can be very Indian which can be broken. Down. I think this is uh, one big takeaway. Um, and I think, uh, I don't know, I'm speaking to such talented chefs who have done a lot of research, uh, you know, in, in their own areas. I think is this serious need to understand the science of Indian gastronomy. I think um, uh, we only talk about the philosophy. We talk about Ayurveda in some abstract terms, you know. But uh, what is the science behind um, the Indian gastronomy? Something, I, I think we need to do it. And I'm sure you, there are a lot of talented people here who would like to take it up as a challenge and do it and we, you know, maybe the next F&B conclave could be devoted to this whole idea of the science of Indian gastronomy and, you know, you're talking about the rasas and all, you know, um, amazing stuff the, this is, you know. Okay, so now, um, uh, you know, uh, Ranvi talked about the, you know, the whole atmosphere of intimidation in which uh, he grew up. I still remember from his book the story he told about his original ustad who made him carry coal for one year. <laughs> so, you know, he used to go up and... <laughs> Yeah, so that was the only way to learn then. You know? <laughs> yeah, but what he learned by carrying the coal was the whole idea of temperature control, I think, what we speak. So again, talking about science of Indian gastronomy, you know. But, you know, the whole, um, you know, the intimidation, I think, is going or has gone from the industry. And, you know, and one, uh, I keep uh, see, I've seen Mega now for about how many, about 10, 15 years, you know. I've seen you grow from the time you were, a, you know, st a trainee straight out of the STEP program. Uh, at uh, Obera and you were working with uh, all the late lamented Olive Beach, you know, one of the finest restaurants Delhi has had. And now you are, you know, synonymous with uh, Lavash by Sabi, you know, though it's called Lavash by Sabi, I think it should be called Lavash by Mega, you know. And that, I think, Sabi, uh, I, I saw him in the last session, I, is he here? I think he's a great guru, you know. I mean, he's one guy who's not at all... <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, 
Well, she's definitely better looking, you know. So, <laughs> let me tell you. Uh, well, um, let me. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, Sabi has been a great teacher, you know, and I think there are a lot of young chefs I know who will swear by Sabi, you know. Uh, you know, he he's known to have temper tantrums and everything, but not anymore. Know, yeah, not anymore. Okay, age is mellowed. Him, okay, so uh, so now, but he is a great teacher. He's a, he's a guy who's not uh, unsure or uh, you know uh, insecure about his position. In, in, so, yeah. So now tell me, um, uh, Mega, what have you learned from him, and how have you taken his learning forward uh, in this brilliant restaurant called uh, Lavash Sabi? sum up what I've learned from Chef Savi would be very difficult. Uh, but as Chef Tanvi said, uh, I started out from hotels. And yes, the background was very intimidating. I was told that you're a trainee, you can't do this, you can't do that. First month was all about plucking mint and basil for the garnish tray. Second month was all about peeling onions. Third was making idli batter and dosa batter. So that's how I started. And I was very scared uh, of all the senior chefs when I was at Ude Villas. But then slowly, as I uh, became accustomed to the environment of the kitchen, it all became much easier. But my real growth happened at Olive when I joined Chef Sabi. And um, he didn't, uh, he taught me that being a chef is not just about cooking. You have to go out, you have to meet tables, you have to read up, you have to, I remember he would just call me up and he would be like, read up on, and he would give me 20 names of international chefs and he would say that read up on them, print their menus, study about those dishes. And he would invest a, a lot of time in me and all of the other chefs who were there in Olive uh, in grooming us and telling us that how, to, uh, how not to be shy, handle PR, handle media, invent our own dishes, uh, always be at the front and uh, not let service do anything. Take the food yourself, do the clearance, meet people. Uh, and after that, uh, I joined, uh, when he left Olive, I left with him and I joined the consultancy Fabrica, where uh, he taught me from scratch how to make kitchen drawings, how to read them. Uh, he would scold me because I would not know much about equipment and equipment details. And he would tell me, you can't be a chef if you don't know the difference in mild steel and stainless steel and what is the difference in these two, where they should be used, which oven you should use where. Uh, then I learned how to make concepts for new restaurants. We did a lot of new restaurants in Fabrica, and I would think of concepts, whether it was a Bombay-style cafe, whether it was uh, something like the wine company making a menu for them, something like beer cafe. And uh, I ended up doing a lot of different genres of uh, cuisines and restaurants, and eventually it, uh, we went on to do Lavash by Sabi. And I had no idea about Bengali cuisine at all, being a Punjabi born and brought up in Delhi. And I, uh, and I was, I had always trained in Mediterranean and in pastry. So I didn't really know much, but that's, I guess that's what he wanted because he didn't really want a full Bengali flavor in the dishes. It was Bengali and Armenian. Then traveled to Calcutta with him. And I remember sitting with him late nights, deciding each and every dish on the menu and how every dish couldn't have anything imported. It had to be a 100% local uh, menu. This was in 2015. Uh, and with, in every dish, we've tried to put something unique, whether it's Nolengur, whether it's Amaranth, Makhana, Khoi, uh, Poi Saag, uh, so many things like uh, Kaling... Ba bandel cheese. Hmm? Bandel cheese, yeah. Kaling Pong. Kalimpong uh, cheese. Kalimpong cheese, smoked bandel. So many different things that uh, I had not even heard of. And now I'm like putting them in my menu every day all thanks to him. He thought, he made me, like, in Olive, I was, I was looking outward at Spanish cuisine, at Italian cuisine, and in, in Olive Beach, we were doing Spanish cuisine with Nuria. But then suddenly, uh, to just, the same man told me that now, only Indian, only look at local stuff. There's a lot of unexplored uh, ingredients that we, no one has heard of. And I remember it was a challenge to order the bandel and smoke bandel. And one day, chef was like, it's been a month. Why hasn't it come? And I was like, I'm talking to him. He's like, you can't talk to him. You don't know Bengali. Tell a person who knows Bengali to talk to the supplier. And then it came within two days. So I've learned a lot from chef. And oh, in fact, um, I, I remember um, the Chef Sabi uh, introduced us to the sticky rice from uh, the northeast, from Meghalaya, if I'm not mistaken, yes. or Manipur. Um, and um, you know, we, we used to have uh, sushi made with uh, Manipuri black rice, you know. Uh, I think what people like him have taught us is that uh, we should be constantly exploring our own backyard. You know, talking about Annamaya, one of my favorite dishes there is a goat's milk uh, paneer uh, tikka, you know. And the goat's milk comes from here, from Vasan Kunj, you know, sort of. You know? Uh, so, um, now Priyam, you know, uh, uh, like all these chefs are uh, into Indian. Of course, uh, Ranveer has done a lot of, um, he launched 
one of the Delhi's finest uh, international restaurants, Sevilla. Uh, Sevilla, you were one of the part of the opening team. Yeah. So now, uh, tell me, uh, Priyam, you have always trained under French chefs, you know. So you know, you were like Darjeeling. You studied there, you know. One naughty boy there, you know, <laughs> and a rocker. You know, he's a great. Uh, he plays the drums. You, you should see him after work. This is great fun, you know. Yeah. And uh, then, uh, so you were this uh, rock child who then uh, went to study, um, uh, you know, hotel management in Calcutta uh, from this uh, humongous private institution. And from there, how did you get into French cuisine? So from beginning only, I was exposed to two very distinguished uh, cultures of food, which was the, my father's side being the Calcutta side of eating family, and my mother's are like hardcore Bangladeshi side, so. And, and she, she's from the Krishnanagar royal family? No, my father's, father's side. Father's side, yes. So, so the Krishnanagar royal family in Bengal like set standards for Bengali cuisine? Yes, Nodia is, Nodia is the founder of uh, sweets in Calcutta, one of the founder, founding pillars of sweets in uh, the whole East India, so. Um, and then I don't know, I, I, I always was inclined towards art. I wanted to join the army. Uh, I had a problem in my ankle. I knew the medicals will not go through, so I didn't, I didn't go for it. And then I asked my mom that I want to get into our, uh, hotel management. My mom said, your life, do whatever you want. And um, that's how I got, got into uh, hotel management. The only thing that I liked was culinary. I didn't go, to, I didn't, I didn't go any other classes, so. And uh, I mean, the teacher forgot my name and all, so. So, Did you clear the exam? Did you have a yeah, yeah, yeah. Exam? All that was okay because I used to I used to pull in lot of uh, lot of uh, uh, checks before the college fest. So all that was taken care of. So, but yeah, the only thing that that I, that was uh, <laughs> the only thing that was that was on my mind from day one was culinary, not nothing else. And uh, and then I, I grew. I was introduced uh, to the hardcore industry through Hyatt. That is where I it, it all began. Hyatt Kolkata. I had Calcutta, yeah. industrial training was Park Hyatt Goa. First job was pre-opening Park Hyatt Hyderabad. So I've been a Hyatt lad before I moved to they restaurants. Great properties to work Yeah, 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 absolutely outstanding. But this, is the, this is where I met my chefs, my mentors, and they exposed, you know, they exposed their culture and their world. And uh, they helped me after almost, what, eight and a half years of cooking to find those techniques to be implemented in my roots. I want to. I want to get back to Bengali cuisine. I want to cook. I want to cook my roots after. You know. I don't know. And you know that brings you very interesting that you raise the point here. I mean, we all believe that. I mean, that's a standard thing. You know. I don't know. Ranveer, whether you used to talk about it when you were young. You know, we feel that. You know, like you can't be a great Italian chef. You know. I mean, there's a limitation, you know. I mean, you were not born in Italy, you did not True, grow that's But you can be a great Bengali chef or 100%. a great uh, Punjabi chef or some, whatever. Do you hold that true or do you also see your French training actually helping you becoming a better Indian chef? You know? Yes, 100%. How, how is it possible? Uh, they're more sublime, more refined. They, they, they taught me the art of breaking down things. And uh, my chefs always taught me two things. The first thing he taught me that to use a machine, become a machine first. And the second thing he taught me that the more you take out from a dish, the better it becomes. So don't keep putting things on a plate just because you want to, you know, impress and stand out. It never works. Now, uh, you know, uh, PM, the one problem that has become, you know, you only look at the plate and wonder where is the ingredient, you know, because <laughs> the, the flowers, True. And the, the, the raw But then, sir, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. Um, um, Flowers are very essential when you know what, uh, what, what flower you're consuming and what, what quant qualities it has. It's not, everything is not all about, you know, just the decoration. So, yeah, so then I went to, uh, I was finishing college and then I had a, then I had a breakup and uh, that secured that I will become a chef. <laughs> totally. So, so I tell everyone, you want to become a good chef, go through a breakup. Stay, stay, stay single. Yeah, yeah. Go through a breakup. Dil tootna bhoot zaruriya chef banne ke liye. Yeah, for any creative, uh, any creative uh, person, just just go through a breakup. You don't know what you will achieve. It's limitless. <laughs> Here you're talking like Gagal Anand, you know, he also had a broken marriage, you know, and then he went to Bangkok. And, and um, <laughs> sort of <laughs> so all this while, this eight years, uh, I had chef. He's the one who... Chef Sabi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything. I am, I, I exist because of him in Delhi. So everything, everything is for him. 
and it will always be like that, even the day I get my Michelin star. Very good. And good that you're working towards the Michelin star. Yeah, yeah, of course, India. Fantastic. Very good. Now, tell me, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, like, say one French technique which you think will, you know, rock the boat in, um, in Bengali cuisine, you know? Um, lots, actually. Uh, you know, uh, glazing, napping, confing, compressing, sauces. We are, we are champions of sauces, you know, uh, mustard, kashundi, um, bata. So those, see, uh, these two cuisines, they are pretty similar in the way they cook. Very, very detailed, very, you know. Uh, and the people behind the cuisines also think that they are the greatest, you know. So the Bengalis and the French share that, you know. Yeah, yeah, they, I mean, like. Supreme confidence in themselves. Like, you know? I, I, I don't look, uh, I don't, I mean, like, me and my mom, we're like this side, that side, when we're cooking in the house. It's difficult to cook, in, cook with her, so. Okay, great. Um, you know, I've been told that lunch is ready, so, and we have uh, f five minutes, so. Um, well, please, can you um, uh, sort of uh, pinpoint one trend which you will think will become big in the next five years? Because now talking about next ten years has become too risky because ten years, twenty trends will be in, in place. In the next five years or next three years, what is the big trend? In terms of uh, food and beverage, I think uh, I'll speak regarding food. Uh, the regional cuisine is the next thing which is uh, going to be really big. And it will be sourced around uh, the ingredients what we would use and the technique which you would use to process them. I mean, uh, what I mean by processing is in terms of cutting, chopping, cooking, and presenting. Fantastic. Right. So great. That's, yeah. that's what I mean. Yeah. Chef Nakal Nikhil. Yeah. I think I'll go with that. Yeah, regional cuisine is definitely coming up. But he's talking about regional cuisine in a little more traditional way. Do you see regional tradition, uh, regional cooking? being reinvented the way it is being done at our dinner? See, ours is more on simplifying it, as he was mentioning that, uh, you know, the use of lesser ingredients. On the, so for, for example, if we do a very traditional style of a fish, uh, uh, which had to be done in a South Indian way, it had multiple masalas to it. Uh, but what we do at our is just three masalas and that, just chili, salt and turmeric, that's it. So it brings out the flavors of the fish, yet the chili which is used is from Bedgi, which is Karnataka chili. So the ethos of South Indian food are still there, but the flavors are very much intact. Uh, Megha? I will also go with the same thing, regional yeah. cuisine. Because you are, of course, one of the champions of yeah. India. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and there are a lot more concepts that Chef has been working on, and we have a lot of presentations lined up of a lot of regional food that has been untapped and unexplored. So what do you think is one regional food which is untapped? But which needs to be in like Dogri cuisine. Do Dogri. Dogri cuisine. I'm I'm half Dogri, so I think we're, we're planning yeah, a pop-up. We, we, we only know about khatta dal. You know, yeah. So <laughs> I'm in fact doing a pop-up next month Fantastic. of Dogri cuisine at Lavash. So I think that's really untapped. Fantastic, great. Uh, um, two three steps, I think. So definitely regional cuisine and uh, regional cuisine with Indian products, everything Indian. And uh, there, are, there are fabulous, you know, senior chefs. Follow them. Take the legacy forward in your own style. Yep. I think that's how every cuisine progresses. You know, sort of, uh, Ranveer, you know, um, last but not the least, you know, you can speak for more than one minute. <laughs> so, like, yeah. I think, I think uh, grains is going to be the conversation of the future. I think uh, where we're going in terms of water being the new gold, um, heavy water grains are going to go out of conversation, you know. Um, millets, do you see millets? millets? And, and, uh, and, and uh, drought resistant grains are by default the future because, you know, because uh, of water shortage. Um, a lot of conversation is going to, going to revolve around uh, climate resistant food, yeah, where, um, you know, suddenly when you hear that chocolate's no, not, no longer going to be available after 30 years, uh, you cannot, you know, uh, you realize that it is going to be about ingredients, but it's going to be about ingredients that are going to be dictated by not us, by what's happening around us. Uh, and grains is going to be a big, big part of that conversation. 